Hello, I'm so glad I'm at this conference today. Thank you so much for coming. I want to thank the people who invited me and those guys who brought this together. Thank you. The Lord bless you. It's such an honor to stand before ministers and be teaching and preaching to them. I mean, many people here can, <laughs> can actually do this, do this. I, I want to say thank you so much for calling me three sister ministers and all the people who organize this conference. The Lord keep you. And the Lord bless you and reward you for your labor in his vineyard. Help me appreciate my awesome wife, my very beautiful wife. Thank you for coming with me. The Lord bless you. You know, I love you. All right. Let's go to God's word together, people of God. Have a message from God and I'm sure that message will bless you to transform you. When God began to share this with me, I was like, oh God, this is really, this is really good. This is awesome. Okay. If you have your Bible, open to Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 5. Hebrews 8 and verse 5. And I'm going to also read um, 1 John chapter 2 and verse 6, Hebrews 8 and verse 5. The Bible says, Who serve the copy and shadow of the heavenly things as Moses was divinely instructed when he was about to make the tabernacle? For he said, See that you make all things according to the pattern shown you on the mountain. 1 John chapter 2, 1 John and chapter 2. And I'm going to read just one verse, 1 John 2 and verse 6. Ask your neighbor when was the last time you read the book of John. Uh, I was asking him uh, uh, how many chapters are in that book of John. It's most likely she's smiling or he's smiling at you, uh, but then get an answer. 1 John chapter 2 uh, verse 6, the Bible says, um, He who says in abide in him ought himself also to walk, just as Jesus walked, that ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Praise the Lord. All right. Today, the title of this conference, theme of this conference is the Jesus pattern. And I want to share with you following the Jesus pattern, following the Jesus pattern, following the Jesus pattern. Shall we pray? Father, thank you because the entrance of the word give light, give understanding unto the simple. As simple people, we've come to learn at your feet and make my tongue the pen of a ready writer. And I write the word of life upon the spirit of man. After now, Daddy, make us all better people. Let us walk according to your counsel. Thank you, God, for the purpose for sending your word shall be fulfilled. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. All right. So, um, I want to share with you. Um, let me start by saying, as long as you are honest, many people say, in ministry, as long as you are honest, it doesn't count what you do. Some people say God doesn't really care as long as everything is done for the glory of God, for his glory. That's it. You can just start a church, just put the name Jesus there, and that means everything is for me, for him. I have somebody else say, just say, I give the glory to God. Uh, that's all that matters. Uh, they make it sound like our attitude does not matter when it comes to the things of God. When it comes to doing ministry, uh, they say it's only it's only it's only our attitude that matters. I uh, just do the things right. But I, I'm here to say to you that it's not the attitude that matters. It's not only about your attitude. It's also about uh, the pattern of God. Tell your neighbor the pattern of God. God is a God of pattern. He doesn't want us to do things abysmally. He doesn't want us to do things just because we read a book and it's talking about attitude. God wants us to do all things according to his standard, according to his pattern. God has pattern. God has pattern as it concerns ministry. It seems that all that matters to people in our time, in our generation is attitude. You hear them say attitude is everything. No, attitude is important. Attitude is key. But attitude is not everything as it concerns reward and result in ministry. What matters is you building according to the mind and the pattern of God. That is what scripture says. There's always a pattern as it concerns the works of God. And our God is interested in us following pattern there's a reason moses uh, is love there's a reason we all talk about moses uh, there's a reason we shout about moses P moses is honored in scriptures that's because moses uh, built all things according to pattern the hebrews hebrews we read hebrews chapter 8 verse 5 god said to him see that you build all things according to pattern exodus 25 verse 40 build all according to pattern god's emphasis was to moses uh, that he builds all things according according to his pattern. Can I ask you, are you building all things according to God's pattern? 
Are you following God's pattern for your life? Are you following God's pattern for your ministry? Do you even have a pattern? Have you received a pattern from God? It's important. The starting place in ministry is to receive a pattern from God. If you don't have a pattern, you begin to do what every other person is doing. You do what is invoked. But God is not a God of, of invoke. God is a God of instruction. God wants you to follow his plan, his instruction, and his mandate even for your life. Bible says concerning Moses uh, that Moses built according to pattern. Bible says in Exodus 25 verse 9, 26, 30, 27, 8, uh, Numbers chapter 8 verse 4 that Moses built according to pattern. Everything and all things were set in place, were done according to the pattern of God for his life. That's the reason he was honored. That's the reason he was honored. But all of the talk, somebody said, you know what? All of the talk about Moses is not important. You know, we, we, are in, we are New Testament believers. We are not living in Old Testament reality. Allow me to say to you that but you are right. John chapter 1 and verse 17, Bible says the law came through Moses. But grace and truth through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, the person of grace, the person of truth, walk on the surface of the heart, walked in our word to show us a pattern for three and a half years. He did ministry so that he can show you and I what our pattern should be in life and in ministry. His pattern was shown to us. And if you read this book, if you read the scriptures, if you read the Bible, you will find it there. What are God's patterns? Somebody said to me, you made a statement before. You, you are just saying, I, I, if I don't have a pattern for my life, uh, it's not okay. I, yes, it is not. It took Moses uh, 40 days. Uh, 40 days of koinonia. 40 days of relationship. Uh, 40 days of communion. Just looking into the face of God. Uh, God puts in his front, uh, before him, uh, the picture of the tabernacle. And he kept seeing the tabernacle. He kept looking at the tabernacle. He kept seeing it until it became ingrained in his spirit. Uh, you also need to tabernacle with God. You need to sit with God. Uh, until that plan for your ministry is engrafted in your mind, uh, is engrafted in your spirit, and you can move up uh, in the power of this. But what is a pattern? What is a pattern? Let me define for us what a pattern is. A pattern is a regularly repeated arrangement, uh, a discernible form uh, of lines, circles, and forms. If you look at these chairs in front of us, uh, you will discover there is a pattern to it. It's the way it's made. They all look the same. They all look the same. Why? Because it's made according to pattern. There is a pattern of arrangement. There is a pattern of their formation. There is a pattern of putting all of these things that made the chia even together. Number two, what is a pattern? Is a series of actions or events that together show how things normally happen or are to be done. Series of actions or events. Uh, many of us in our churches, I'm talking to ministers, drama minister, music minister, preachers, man of God. Many of us uh, in our churches, in our ministry, we already have a way in which things are done. When you went to church, probably last Sunday, you knew when the pastor is going to preach because you knew that the choir had just stopped singing. There is an arrangement. There is a sequence of events uh, that leads to another thing. Uh, and that's what it means. It means a series of actions or events uh, that together show how things normally happen or are to be done. Number three, someone or something used as a model to make a copy, a design, or an expected action. Or an expected action, someone or something used as a model. God is our model, Jesus is our model. Therefore, you see, this example is very important. When you see a computer, what happens is that the first laptop was made and every other one was made repeating the pattern. So, this becomes a model for making other ones. The first laptop was made, and then HP does what is called um, factory assembling of others. That's what happens. That's how every laptop of a model looks like the same. Jesus is our model. He has worked as a pattern for us. God expects us to pattern our life after him so that when people see us, they see Jesus. They see a repeated pattern. They see us, we look the same. They see us, and there's no difference between us and Jesus. They see us and they see, they see no difference between how Jesus did ministry and how we are doing our ministry. I'm saying for us as Christians, Jesus is the only model and pattern to follow. Yes, you should submit to fathers. I'm very, I submit to fathers and spiritual authority. I'm very high on honor. I will never say you we have to be dishonorable. 
But Paul, one of the most important characters in biblical history and in Christianity, uh, he said that we should honor God, honor God, honor God, honor Jesus. He said it, he said, imitate me just as I also imitate Christ. First Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1. He was saying, follow me as I follow Christ. He was saying, to the extent of which I follow Christ, follow me also. Jesus is the example. I am following after him. In case it is hard and difficult for you to see Jesus, you can look at me because I am patterning my life after Christ. That's what Paul was saying. And so if you follow me, then you would also be following Christ. He said, follow me as I am also following Christ. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1. He said, be ye therefore followers of God. As dearly loved children, we must follow the Jesus pattern to live just as Jesus has lived, uh, to do all things just as we saw him do. Moses, for Moses, God showed him a tabernacle, like I said, in the heavenlies for 40 days. It was a vision of the temple of God. Uh, for all, Jesus came down for three and a half years, he kept doing ministry. And if we we'll read the scriptures, if we we'll read the synoptic gospels, uh, Matthew, Mark, Luke, uh, we will find uh, the book. Uh, talks about the pattern of Jesus' ministry. I would like to say to you that there are three giants in scriptures, uh, three people, if you remove their writings, remove their remarks, uh, remove their imports from the New Testament, you will not have a complete scripture. Uh, and that is Paul, Peter, and John. And they said something about pattern. They said certain things about pattern. They spoke about the importance of following the Jesus example. They spoke about the importance of following the Jesus pattern. Like I said before, Paul said in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1, he said, imitate me just as I also, also imitate Christ. Um, Ephesians chapter 5 verse 1, he said, be ye therefore followers of God, therefore as dearly loved children. That's what Paul said. Paul said, listen, this is my life goal. This is what I do. Patterning my life after Christ. And he was encouraging his followers uh, to also be followers, to also imitate, uh, to also imitate, mimitates, imitates God. That's what he was saying. And I love how Peter put it, 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 21. If for to this you are called, because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that you should follow in his steps. Uh, Therefore, when it concerns the steps you make, uh, it must be as Jesus will make that step. Uh. I mean, we used to say, what will Jesus do? It is not something that is whole. It is something we must learn to do even now. You see, you follow the steps of God as it concerns compassion. What will Jesus do as it concerns deliverance? Follow Jesus' steps. What will Jesus do as it concerns healing? How will Jesus do it? You begin to make steps because you see Jesus moving in that steps. You see Jesus moving in that light. And you also begin to move in that light. Let's see, John said, John also said in 1 John chapter 2, verse 6, he said, He who says he abide in me, in him, ought himself also to walk just as he walked. Ought himself. Hurt himself. Now someone say, but the pattern of Jesus are not so easily designable. I said that's simple. Jesus himself uh, knew that that pattern is, is easy. If you will read the word of God. If you will study the word of God. Listen, Jesus said in John chapter 13 verse 15. He said, for I have given you an example that you should do as I have done to you. You should do as I have done to you. You should walk as I have walked. Jesus was saying, listen, I've done all these things. Greater works than this shall you do. He's saying you can't walk in my walk. You can walk my works. You can do the works of God. You can follow after my steps. You can do that which is possible in you. Jesus was saying, I've lived as an example. The time has come for you to follow me. If you are in ministry, the race is cut out for you. You are not supposed to pattern your ministry because of what is famous. After what is famous, after what is popular, after what is acceptable, pattern your ministry after Jesus. That's the greatest call. Following the Jesus pattern, sticking with the Jesus pattern, being an example of the Jesus example. And in the next few minutes, I would like to share with us uh, some patterns I designed from studying, from the Holy Spirit speaking to me, from the life of Christ. Patterns that, if not easily designable, like I've always maintained, uh, is because we are not studying it. If the apostles can see it, if the apostles can live in such patterns, uh, if the apostles can walk in such reality, then it's also possible for us to walk in it. Allow me to say to you, that there are no generals that you have seen today. There are no generals that walk our words. Uh, generals who are generals indeed in Christ, in light and in life, uh, who you will not see in their life. Uh, these patterns that I'm about to share with you. Some of it may not be fashionable, but the ways and the principles of God don't go out of fashion. 
the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. I know we say our God does not change. I know, I know we quote that scripture, our God does not change, and our God does not change. But I tell people this, because it does not change, it's also part of our problems. <laughs> because his ways are also set. I know you live in a technological generation, but our God will not change his mind. He will not, you can't just slide into the blessings, slide into the principles of God, and just, and just, and just like it. No, you can't do that. His ways are set. And there's a blessing in being in serving a God whose ways are set. As scripture says, and I love it, Malachi says that because the Lord changed not, that is why we have not been consumed. Glory to God. You and I are not consumed because we serve a God that doesn't change. Quickly, very quickly, I want to begin to share with you the sanable pattern from the life of Christ. They are the nine C's. The C's, I see. So all of them start with C. I'm, I'm not just going to tell you what they are. I'm going to tell you what importance they are going to serve in your life. So the first one is Christ-likeness. This is our job description. You see, as I said, I'm not just going to tell you what it is. I'm going to tell you the importance. I mean, what is their aim? What is their objective in your life? So the first pattern I saw in Jesus' life is Christ-likeness. And I also saw that in the life of the apostles. And this is our job description. This is resembling or showing the spirit of Christ. Romans chapter 8 verse 9. Bible says, if any man has not the spirit of Christ, he is none of it. It may be said, and it should be said, that Christ-likeness is not a new testament phenomenon that name might be new testament in nature but this thing is not new testament why because that has been the message of the gospel that has been the message of god from the very beginning genesis chapter 1 and verse 26 let us make mine a home image after our own likeness so god made the man after his own likeness. So sin came in and we could no longer walk in the likeness of God. And it got to a point we do not even understand how God's likeness looked like. So God became man. And God for three and a half years began to show us how the likeness of him, what is his likeness, how he himself walk even on the surface of the heart. The reason we are all here is to manifest God's presence on earth through Christ-likeness. When we exhibit on the human level the qualities and characteristics of Lord Jesus Christ, we are Christ-like. The moment people see you and they see Christ, when people see you, they see Christ. Now let me say this to you and you may want to write this down. When anyone encounters us, their greatest takeaway should be how much like Christ we are. <laughs> Glory to God. When anyone encounters us, the greatest takeaway should not be how awesome we are, how anointed we are, how prayerful we are. Many people are so prayerful, but they say, no, there's no character. You, 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 you talk to somebody and people say, wow, fantastic, fantastic. Oh God, such an anointed person. And the next minute, you begin a course. <laughs> You begin to cause, and the person looks at you. The takeaway is no longer the anointing. The takeaway is this man is the man of God that causes. Sir. They are taken away from us. Should be how much like Christ we are, and that speaks of the character, the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Sir. The dimension of the fruit of the Spirit in our life. We have become a generation that emphasizes the gifts without speaking about the fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit: temperance, joy. The fruit of the Holy Spirit, faith, uh, peace. Uh, these are things we must again begin to ask ourselves. Uh, where have we missed it? Uh, we must become believers indeed. Uh, I told somebody, uh, I, I was speaking to a minister, and he just, um, one of these young guys, and he just fell into, into an error. And I called him, I said, God just showed me this. Uh, God just showed me this. And he said, uh, sir, sir, I said, I said, keep quiet. Stop calling yourself a man of God. First of all, learn how to be a believer. Then you can be a man of God. Why? Because Christ-likeness is the foundation. is the job description. Listen to this. Jesus hasn't only called us to preach the gospel. He has also called us to be like him. To be like him. Second Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. And we, with unfailed faces, all refer to God's Lord's glory. We are transformed into that same level of glory by the Spirit of God. I love the way Charles Spurgeon put it. He said a Christian should be a striking likeness of Jesus Christ. We should be pictures of Christ. Let that be your goal. Lord, let me be pictures of Christ. Lord, let me be pictures. 
even of Christ. Christ likeness sir, is what God has called us to. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15. He says, and he is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Let it be like father, like son. Let people say like father, like son. Let people say like Jesus, like you. Let them put your name like Jesus, like you. Why? Because when they see you, they see it coming out from you, exhibiting the graces and the manifest power that the Holy Spirit himself alone can bring. Yes, this is God's calling for our life. Number two, very quickly, what has God called us to? What is, what, what is that pattern you and I must follow after? Charisma. Charisma. It's giftings. What I call charisma, giftings, God's divine empowerment. Listen to this. There is no work of God that can be done without the ability of God. God has not called us to live a natural life. He has called us to supernatural. Ministry is us introducing divinity to the humanity of man. That's what ministry is about. Uh, ministry is bringing the divinity into place. It's the dimension of the supernatural that must be prevalent in our ministry. Jesus had operational in his ministry, operational in his life, the gift of the Spirit. Uh, listen to this. There was a time uh, he was going, uh, he saw with the woman by the side of the, by, by the well. Uh, and she said, go call your husband for me. And that woman, that woman looked at her and looked at him and said, I, I, do, I, do not have, I do not have a husband. He said, you are right because you have had 12. Listen, that, that, that's the operation out there is the gift of knowledge. Peter came to him and, and, and folks came and said they have not paid their temple tax. And he said to Peter, go to the fish, mouth of the fisher, remove it for me. Remove, you see money there. He said, remove it and go and pay for me and you. Listen to that. That is the gift of wisdom in oppression. God, Jesus walked in the supernatural. He was at Cana in Galilee. There was yet, uh, there, there was yet no wine. It said, filled water. He said, go and give it to the master of the ceremony. And then when they tasted it, it was like the best wine they've ever seen. Listen, I remember that time, Jesus himself, uh, he was going, he sent the disciples to go before him. Uh, and Bible says they went uh, and he got to the seashore and there was no boat. Uh, and the man just started walking on water. He just walked to the other, he just walked on water. Peter said, what is this, Emma? What is this? Ah! <laughs> What's going on? Tell me to come if you are the one. Say, come, come now. And he began to walk on water. Hey, man of God, I know you abused Peter that he sank, but you have never walked on water. I know. It's supernatural. See, you need to lock yourself in that room. You are coming out too much. You need to throw your phone away. Listen, all this talking on social media will not help you. The people you are abusing don't even have your time to check it. Are you listening to me? You need to lock yourself in and say, Lord, is it that you anoint me or take my life? Somebody has to say, Lord, is it that you take away ministry from me or you anoint me? I am tired of praying for people and they are dying. The more you pray, the more they die. Somebody is sick in your church. You are giving advice that the medical doctor will do better. When last did you teach malaria? Listen, the batting place for Jesus' pattern ministry is supernatural equipping by the Holy Spirit. Luke chapter 4 verse 1, and Jesus went in the power of the Holy Ghost. He went, he went, he went in the power of the Holy Ghost. After 40 days, I love verse 14, Luke 4, Bible says, and Jesus returned. He returned in the power of the Spirit. Let me say this to you, there has to be a returning for you. You have to return in the power of the Spirit. You need to return in the power of the Spirit. Wherever your mission is location, located, wherever you are situated, people must know in that place that you have come. Why? Because you return in the power of the Spirit. Jesus returned. Jesus returned. Until, let me say this to you, many of us, God has called us. And first thing you are doing is designing a logo. Until you have the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit, you shouldn't launch out into ministry. I didn't find that in the pattern in Christ. I did. First of all, he was baptized. After baptism, he went to the Holy. He went in forty days in the wilderness, and after he was anointed, he came back in the full of the power of the Holy Ghost. <laughs> that doesn't look like you. You are looking for all. That doesn't look like you. You've got that people, you started doing drama. That's not the way out. You have to be empowered. You have to pay the price. Because it is a, 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 a technology generation does not mean the things of the spirit is technology. Are you following me? 
You can't slide into power. Just like you slide into pictures. You can't do that. The things of the spirit are still the same way. That's why when believers cry and shout, you know, I serve a God. He is never changing. The same yesterday, today, and forevermore. And they begin to dance. I say, that's also a problem. You don't know. The problem, if it does not change, it means that the pattern before is still the pattern now. If it has changed, we have become more technology conscious. I can back it again. Can even say amen or what's up? And then it happens. <laughs> you know, it makes sense. But he says, because I change not, that's why we have not been consumed. So, okay, it's better. At least we are preserved. Or you might be preserved and be useless. Listen, you need empowerment in ministry. Let no one fool you. Impact and result in ministry is about the supernatural power of the Holy Spirit. Impact and result in ministry is about the supernatural um, a power of the Holy Spirit. Somebody sing and people are falling down. Don't mess around. As I say, you could see a long girl. It's beef. Sit down and go. Let God anoint you. Somebody say, I can also lay hands. Come and lay hands. That's why you are pushing people and putting legs behind so that they can fall. Keep quiet. Things are easily done when the Spirit comes. Things are easier when the Spirit comes. When the Spirit comes upon your ministry, you will know. An encounter that changes your life, you will know. Are you following me? I'm trying not to use my example because this is the Jesus pattern. But when he came upon my life, I knew that from now, it's different. You have been speaking in tongues the same way. Tika, 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 tika. Leave tika alone. Move on to higher things. Move on to higher depth. Move on to greater possibilities. Is someone listening to me? We must seek again the supernatural pattern. And we must say, Lord, there must be the supernatural in my ministry. It's not intelligence. Don't come and be teaching people leadership and one, two, three, leadership two, two, four, get transformation five, five, seven. Listen, that is not it. If not, they will go to MBA school. They are in charge for the spiritual. For the spiritual. How can you sing for 30 minutes and nobody hears and sees anything more than your sonorous voice? Something is wrong. You preach for one hour. You are not staring anything inside of people. Oh, I love that man. Vikalo Shiki Adaba. That man came to Jesus. The Bible says he made clay and he said, do you see? Because he touched him once and he said, no, I see men as trees. Many of us in ministry, we are going on the power of one touch. Therefore, yes, you can pray for headache, he goes. But when it becomes deeper things, nothing happens. Why? Because what you need is the power of the second touch. Bible says when Jesus touched him again, transformation happened. Will you lift up your hands? Let's pray one minute. Lord, will you touch me again. Lord, will you touch my ministry again? I'm tired of this level. Come on, press in. Come on, press in. Will you touch me again? Will you touch me again? I need a touch that change. I need a touch that transforms. I need a touch that change. I need a touch that transforms. A touch that transforms. A touch that changes. A touch that transforms. A touch Touch me again, Lord. Touch my ministry. Touch my life. Touch me again, oh God. Come on. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Have your seat. Listen. Supernatural touch. A touch that changes. Man, he said, I see men. He, he started seeing clearly. All these ones, you are, say, I, I perceive, I perceive. I was talking to a man. He said, how do, you, how do you say that God said? I said, God said. He said, I should say, I think I had God. You see, that's first touch. You need to say, God touched me again. God, because perception, are you listening to me? You must know. Paul said, I am deeply persuaded. You have been doing prophetic Sunday, prophetic day, prophetic night. They are not, they still don't have jobs. You say people are not joining your prayer meeting. Why would they join? They are joining others. Results. Tell your neighbor, results is the end of the game. Results is the name of the game. I saw results in the life of Christ. They were looking for, and Peter, he said, don't worry. Let your shadow just pass. Let's just lay them as a result. 
That's results. Supernatural advertisement follows results. Advertisement follows results. You don't have to know them. <laughs> you don't have to. People will tell you. Can you pastor young men in this time and not know Joshua Sema? Can you? They will say it. They will tell you. They will tell if you. You might be angry, but they will tell you. Uh, what do you call it? Results. Don't be what you are not. Number three. What do I see? A pattern again in the life of Christ. Complete integrity. That is what embodies our ministry. That is where boldness comes in ministry. There are things you cannot speak to if you are under the bondage of that thing. All of you sleeping around. You are not you know fit talking. Because you know that you are sleeping around, you man of God. If you say it, <laughs> ah, they just cut that clips and people begin to talk about you. I'm going to again. In the middle of the night, just say, target, target, target. Say, what's going on here? <laughs> you are speaking to what you have not overcome. I saw in the life of Christ, a life devoid of scandal. No, it's not because you are close to that Aristo that people are talking. It's because they know you. Jesus, the prostitute came and they were putting perfume on his leg. Nobody ever said he was sleeping with them. Why? Because of the life he lived. Many people are not as bold as it concerns the thing they should be bold about because they are guilty of what they are called to speak to. Can you hear that? What we are called to speak to, we are under the bondage of that. How can God call you to deliver people from poverty when you are poor? When you say it's safe, you will be saying it's much more. But when your first car comes, when the millions land in your account, uh, boldness will come. You say, I remember when I was poor. <laughs> what happened? Change comes because of your results. Just said, and Jesus had a running battle with the Pharisees. Have we not become Pharisees? Then Jesus spoke to the multitude and to his disciples. He said, The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, we also sit in front in church. Amen. He said, Therefore, whatever they tell you to observe, he said, That's observe and do. But do not do according to their works, for they say and do not do. God said this to me. Two things. You might want to write it down. He said, Ministry without character is garbage. It's trash. Ministry without character, trash. Second thing he said, He said, Our message is losing its strength because our character is failing. Our message is losing strength because our character is failing. First Peter chapter 1, 3 to 6. So First Peter 3, 16. He said, keeping a clear conscience so that those who speak maliciously against your good behavior in Christ may be ashamed of their slander. Do you know that there are people people have speak against? Yeah. Since they have born me in my life. In my life. I have never seen a pastor, a general abuse like the pastor, like Bishop David Oedepo. I have never. I, everybody has an opinion. Bishop Baba does not reply, but now he replies. He replies. He replies powerfully. You know why? You know why you cannot say anything? Because at the end of the day, those who slander are even ashamed. Because we see the good behavior and many of those things is beef. Ah, uh, Yoruba call it Ilara. When they say, why? What did he do? You don't know. You just, you are just angry. Angry. You pray the same. I remember I was telling a story of a man of God. Ayaba. Two of them were at Yaba. 100 people church. 100 people church. They started together. They were struggling. Praying in tongue. Kalosha. Hey, brother. Oh, Lord, help my ministry. Help my ministry. And then suddenly, he grew to 200. Both of them were chasing each other. 180, 200. 180, 200. And then suddenly, this man church built to become a nation. This other one still doing 250, 300. He will not go on Facebook and be abusing. And people will be saying, and people will say, ah, he's saying truth. Uh, you don't know the story. If you know the story, you will know that not all the right is right. Because the art it is coming from is a heart of bitterness. 
one thing you must be careful of in ministry is bitterness. Bitterness. You don't have a right. Anyone sitting there under this, you don't have a right to abuse any big man. You don't have a right. Let them abuse each other. I remember one time Pastor Tunde Bakari was talking about Bishop. I said, hey, oh, okay. It's okay. But I don't understand where Brother Tunde, living at Stank Eleway, he is abusing Bishop. I don't understand that one. And he says he's praying. Where is the Spirit of Christ? Listen to this. Many times we are the reason men slander the gospel. We are the Bible some people will ever read. The way you live your life matters. The way you comport yourself matters. The way you even, the clothes you wear matters. Everything you do matters. Number four. What am I here to say to you? I saw a pattern again. It is C, another C. Caring and serving. Caring and serving. And you, I love you to write in front of it. The path to greatness. Caring and serving is the path to greatness. This is a service ministry. The definition of ministry is service. You are called to serve people, to serve men. You are not called so that they can carry your Bible, be at your back and call. That is not the initial thing. Honor may come in ministry, but the most important responsibility of the man of God is to serve and to care for the people. Just example is that we should serve. Listen to this in this kingdom. Greatness is via service. Greatness is via service. Don't count how much you have done. Just keep doing it. That is God's call upon our lives. That is God's call upon our lives. Matthew 20, 28. Just as the Son of Man has not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life a ransom to many. A ransom to many. That's why we are here. Remember Christ in the upper room? And he called the disciples and they began to wash their feet. If you're living in a culture such as ours, you don't understand it. Washing feet is the work of slaves in that speed time. In that time, when you go out, the slaves will come and wash the feet so that people can come in, so that the guests can come in. No one that is a son in a house washes the leg of anybody. It's the work of slaves. Jesus was saying, you have to become a slave in order for this kingdom to advance. Men will use you. They will use your gifts. You will pray for them. They will abuse you tomorrow. You are not supposed to stop. You continue. Are you following me? Listen, that is the work we are called to do. We are called to serve. We are called to care. That is our work. When we stop caring, we stop moving in impact. It's time to run just the way God wants you to run. Number five, conciseness and focus. Conciseness and focus on vision. Your part, that's what I call your part in God's plan. Conciseness and focus on your vision. What is your vision? What has God called you to do? <laughs> As our faces differ, so also is God's vision for our life different. Somebody say, you know I'm a pastor like you. I say, what kind of nonsense is that? How can you be a pastor like me? You are a pastor. In our designation, we are pastors. But in our calling, we are different. So you are not like any other person. His focus, his personality, his character, his nature is different from yours. What you will amp on, he will not amp on it. Uh, the way he will say it, he will not say it that way. Are you following me? Oh, Baba Deboye is a prophet, but he speaks much more, more. Are you following me? Uh, Bishop Benetje is a prophet, but he speaks loud. loud. <laughs> character, personality is reflected in ministry. Don't copy anybody. You are too gentle to be shouting. So when people talk to you after the poop is there, I wonder, ah, thank you, Lord Shelley, man of, you now say it's the anointing. You are faking it. This person you are following. <laughs> focus. Nothing I saw, I saw, I saw focus. Nothing you can do. Jesus was not going to change his mind. Nothing. Bible already said concerning him, Psalm 40 verse 7, I come as written of me in the volume of the book to do your will, O God. 10, 7 Hebrews, the same thing was recorded. I come as written of me in the volume of the book to do your will, O God. It was written concerning him. He knew why he came. He was focused on it. You can't be doing what every other person is doing. You can't. God's calling for you is different. John's call was different from Jesus' call. It was different. Though they were family members, but it was different. 
You might be in the same anointing, under the same grace, but it's my is different. It's different. And because you are different, doesn't mean God has not called you. From the stream I came from, there was a man of God that came also for that stream. His name was Pastor Sam. And Pastor Sam was speaking. I was interviewing him one day. And Pastor Sam was saying, you know, I used to believe I didn't have a call. He said, and, and that was because I could not quote scriptures the way others were quoting it. He said, so I felt very low because everybody was a walking Bible. He said, but I was different. He said, when they come, they preach fire. I remember, you know his brother now. His brother preaches fire. Reverend Sam is. <laughs> and he said, when I look at my brother too, he's on fire. I said, are you sure these are not the people God called? You are too gentle. You know what? Today you cannot say God has not called you. Why? Because even in his simplicity, God found a place for you. Your uniqueness is God's equipping for you to be what he wants you to become. Just add enemies like you will also have. <laughs> ah. And so Herod sent to him. But he was focused on his vision, Luke 13, 32. He said, go tell that fox. I will keep on driving out demons and healing people today and tomorrow. And on the third day, I will reach my goal. That means there's a vision. There's a plan. I will be on the cross. On the third day, I'll be on the cross. At that day, you can say what you want to say. But before that time, I'll keep doing all I've got to do. Can I say to you that don't listen to what people say? People who make it in ministry stick to what God has called them to even if it looks odd. Actually, Kuma never had a church. Always had crusades. Always had miracle services. People said she was odd. She dresses flamboyantly. Always talking about the Holy Spirit that people knew nothing about. But she knew she knew the Holy Spirit. And God used her in her time. If you look at people, you will keep flowing in other people's streams. It is time for you to have your own stream. Stay in your uniqueness. Appreciate what God has called you to. Who can ever believe? Who can ever believe, apart from today, now that everybody wants to become an apostle? Because they have seen it. Six years ago, tell people you are an apostle and you are not starting the church. People will not listen to you. Where will you be preaching? Where will you be teaching? But these days, that has all changed. Why? Because of the Europos of this world. They are Romans of this world. They, they, have, they have channels because God has called them. Stay with it. Apostles don't start a church. If God has not said start a church, evangelists don't become a teacher. If God has not called you, prophets, you don't have to do Sunday services. Be under somebody. If God has not called you to do it, uh, drama minister, if God has called you to be under Mount Zion, don't go and start your own and do logo and be designing. There is nothing called ministry except we do it according to the pattern. According to the pattern. That's why he said, some people say, I hid, I hid in your name. I cast devils. I don't know you. Did you not say, I don't know you. You don't understand. I don't know you. I don't understand what you're talking about. <laughs> I have fasted. I have prayed. I don't know what time I woke up today. <laughs> I have prayed. I have fasted. I will not get They will not say they don't know me. <laughs> you know, Aluta is not something you can force in heaven. <laughs> but, but may you not hear it. And therefore, you must follow the pattern. Follow the pattern. It might look odd, but focus. Tell your neighbor, focus. Focus. God does not say start evening service. You are starting. God didn't say do three services, but you want to tell people, you know, we run five services in our church. Yeah, one five services in our church. One service. Hey, don't you are five services in our church. Stop it. Do what God has called you to do. Can I continue here? Number seven, compassion. Compassion. That's the seventh C I saw in the life of Christ. They are following me through truth. Sixth one. You know when you slide. That's why I said since of truth is not slidable. When you slide, you might do over slide. I slide it too much. <laughs> we are still in six, so I need to run. Number six, competence. Competence. And I call it doing good works. Competence. Competence. Doing good works. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. Our God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and power. Who went around doing what? Doing good. Jesus did ministry with a lot of competences. 
What is competence? It is the ability to do something successfully and efficiently. That's competence. Many of us are not competent. You are casting out a demon for 30 days. Lack of competency. 30 days. You are casting out demons. 30 days. Is that Jesus' pattern? 30 days. Okay, close it up. And then we'll come and reopen tomorrow. What is wrong with you? I'm not in your tone. Stop it. Go back to God. You lack competence. Competence. To do it effectively. Are you competent in counseling? You cancel people. They did what you said they should do and their life became worse. Cancel who are You are not competent. Prayer. Deliverance. You have prayed so much and you come. Pastor, pastor, the pastor said we should come for prayer meeting. These are church members talking. Say we should come. The one we have been coming, what has happened? That is the reason our prayer meetings are not full. We are not facing truth. Lack of results. If people find results in prayer meetings, you will not tell them. They will be excited. Competency. Be competent in what you are doing. Are you working efficiently and successfully? We have a lot of people around the pulpit uh, in ministry who are doing damage to the work of ministry because they lack competency. No training, nothing, but anything, but intelligence. Somebody come and is opening scriptures and is doing a somersault of the Bible. I had a man of God one time and I went back and I said, is it not this Bible? <laughs> Where is he talking about? You don't understand it. Why? Lack of competence. Listen to this. I saw a lot of that in the life of Jesus. Mark chapter 1 verse 22. The people were amazed at his teaching. Because he taught them as one who had authority. The way you are even teaching the word, nobody will do it. Even you, you don't seem to believe what you are teaching. You don't seem to believe it. Because you are saying it. Listen, God can do it. What did I say again? Tell me what did I say again? God can do it. There is nothing that God cannot do. God can do it. What are you going through? God can do it. And they are wondering at Sibosa, progress. God can do it. <laughs> the title of my message today is God can do it. Can somebody shout hallelujah? And then they are, they are looking at you. And you are saying church is not going to grow. Can you go to that church if you are a member? Can you attend your church? These are questions. Can you attend your own concert? You attend your own drama ministry outreach. You painted the devil for us. It was accurate. You painted Jesus. It was inaccurate. He thought differently. There's a way of the cross. It's a way that is clear. Someone listening to me. Oh, Mark 3, 11. Have you read it before? Let's read it together. Bible says, whenever impure spirits saw him, <laughs> they fell down before him and cried out, you are the son of God. Did he cast them out? Did he say anything? What did happen? When they saw him. Tell your neighbor, there are levels to these things. When they saw him, they just started manifesting by seeing him. Listen, if you pay the price, you can become like that. Whatever you see in the life of Jesus, he said, greater works than this shall you also do. Therefore, I know that when I see a pattern and I follow it and I pray and I takuti Jesus, not the name of a crusade, it's a personal instruction. <laughs> you just stay with Christ. That's what it means, takuti Jesus, in case you don't understand Yoruba. <laughs> you just stay with Christ. It will, it will happen for you just like it happened for Christ. He did not live on that as divinity. He removed himself of all that was divine. So that he can show us what is possible even in human flesh. When you see Jesus do it, it's because it's possible. We might not have done it because our consecration is not enough. We might not have done it because our competency is not enough. But I tell you that I believe men still walks on water. I believe therefore that men still raise dead. I mean, the that that did it in Benin. Men still raise dead. I tell people before I die, I will raise the dead. I keep telling people, I'm not joking. Every time a person dies, I say, I'm still praying. One day I know. They say, OTG. I will tell you that the foundation was laid years ago because I believe. Keep believing. That thing will happen. Build your competency. 
you can sing better than this. It's because you are the best in your church. And that church is local. That's why you are losing local standard to say you are good. There is an international standard. You can do better. You can speak better. You can spray better. You can have greater results. Increase your competency and you will increase your speed, your acceleration and your advancement even in ministry. Competency. He was so competent, he gave some people, just dashed them, 12 disciples, say go. Bible says, and they came back. I say, even demons answer to us in your name. <laughs> he was not surprised. He danced in the spirit. Yeah. He returned with joy. The reason people don't return to your ministry with joy is because there's no results. Because the competence, your competence. So when they are coming, joy. Praise God. People enter your concern. Have you ever seen, you hear about a concert, you are going to a concert, you are excited before the concert. Excited. Why? Because you know what will happen. You know the person is competent. You go to a crusade. You know who is preaching. That's why miracles happen. Because the art of expectancy. I remember those days uh, that this German preacher, what's his name? Uh, used to do crusade all over Nigeria. Went to his reward now. Rian Bonke. Rian Bonke would come to him. Uh, everybody in our church. <laughs> Even though we are orthodox, we don't speak in tongues. And they will be chanting, I'm going to orthodox, I'm going to call, I'm going to call, I'm going to call. People became ministers. They were not called, no calling at all. Dickens, uh, they would go and attend ministers' conference of their bunker. Why? Because of competency. It's not lack of people, it is lack of competence. Lack of competence. Number seven. Now I can go to seven eventually. Number seven. Compassion. That's the boss that drives us forward. Compassion. Is the boss that drives you forward. Is that transportation that heaven gives you in order to be able to move your ministry forward. Uh, people think the anointing is his. No, it's not only the anointing. Uh, it is compassion. Bible says again and again in scriptures, uh, Jesus was moved with compassion. Jesus was moved with compassion. And because he was moved with compassion, he did things in the life of people. I remember one time I was praying for somebody. They were praying for, some, for somebody for the deliverance and they were praying. Uh, they were praying so much. I came in there. And, and, and I said, what's going on here? They said, we have been on it for four, four hours. I said, ah, Koti Reini. They said, no, we just start praying. They just started praying. And then one lady came. And the lady stood. And the lady began to cry. I have never seen somebody pray for somebody and started crying in deliverance. The lady started crying. Oh, Lord, this is your daughter. The daughter of Zion cannot continue to go through this. And she started crying. You died for her also. The devil cannot ravage this life. And she started crying. Oh, you know, the girl just went down, boom, rose up, say, where am I? Ah, you know, they have done Jesus, Holy Ghost fire. They have done fire, fire, Jesus, blood of God. They have done everything, nothing happened. But when she started crying, when compassion came in, compassion is a voice that steals God even in his work. When compassion, when the voice of compassion rings, God comes on scene. God was walking on the road and the man shouted, Jesus, Jesus of Nazareth, have mercy on me. Jesus had that voice and he stopped. The man of God, the most important voice in your ministry must be the voice of mercy and compassion. What is compassion? It's feeling of deep sympathy and sorrow. For another who is hurting, who is in pain, or who is in misfortune. Deep sympathy. Luke 7 13. When the Lord saw her, he felt compassion for her and said to her, Do not weep. Jesus felt compassion. Who are you? You see, that's what happens in this generation. We have prayed so much in tongues, chatted so much that we don't even have emotion again. Am I speaking to somebody? Say, Are you in love? No, no. People like us. People like us. I, I, okay, are you in pain? No, no, no. And that girl is going through stuff. And then she, when they will not pray. And then you continue. That person needs compassion. The Holy Spirit that you are praying to did not tell you that one, Abby. Compassion. Stop, 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 stop and listen. Wait and listen. Let somebody intrude into your prayer time because they are in pain. Many people are in pain. Don't forget, don't mind how they are doing. Many people are in pain. We all wear suits. Especially if you are a lady. God bless the Mary case of this world. When they blend the face, 
They look like they don't even go to the toilet. They're very fantastic. Say, these people don't have a problem. Why did I come as a man? But there's a problem. Compassion. Sympathy. But hate. That's two more now, right? And then we are done. And then I'm done. Sorry. I have something else to say, but I'm done. All right? Company. The eighth C is a company. That is a people to work with. Let's stop deceiving ourselves. There is no general anywhere who built anything by himself. Abraham have I called alone. But Abraham needed people. He had a servant who he had to send to go and look for a wife for his own son. Nobody does ministry alone. A people to work with. The reason you are struggling in ministry, or the reason many people are struggling in ministry, is because they are doing it alone. You are the only one who is anointed. Everybody who sings cannot sing like you. I don't know who possessed you that way, that you are so proud, that you think you are the only one who teaches, you are the only one who sings. You don't need anybody. And that's why you are where you are. You are going to increase then you will need people. Let me say this to you, the starting point of Jesus' ministry. You know, we're talking about the Jesus pattern. What I first of all saw was not that I started crusade. What I first of all saw him do was to go and call people to himself. I will make you fishers of men. He gave them a vision to live by and they started following him. Follow me, follow me. I'll make you fishers of men. Follow me, follow me. We'll be fishing men. And they followed him. He had a people to himself. What you need first is a people. Jesus' pastor is that he will cause certain people to be with you. Though they may not be with you forever, but they will be with you. Because some people, they just want everybody to be with them forever. Jesus had his disciples. And what did he do to them? Number one, he sent them out. Number two, he ate with them and stayed with them. That's what discipleship is. Many people don't understand discipleship. And our generation is losing out because we have so many shallow tongue-praying believers. <laughs> like that adjective, shallow. Tongue praying believers. Glory to God. They sound like generator, but they are so shallow. They are just one inch deeper. But in tongues and in loudness, they are so high. Glory to God. Decibels 1000. Kaleba, Haya. They go high. But deepness, nothing. Why? Because there is no discipleship. Why? Because nobody is teaching them the core things of God. Why? Because nobody is really telling them what we need to become. He ate with them, stayed with them. They saw him and began to do just as he has done. He explained mysteries of the kingdom to them. So he shared parables with people and they came back and said, what are you saying? And then he shared to them. He said, unto the world it is not given, but unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom. What did they do? They helped him in meeting his needs. Are you following me? They were the crusade organizers. Ha! Sir, there's no food. What do you have? Okay, there's a boy there. How did they know? Because they were interacting. Jesus didn't have that information. There's a boy there with five loaves. They took the work further. That's what I discovered. Listen to this. And this may shock you. For three and a half years, Jesus stayed on the surface of the earth and did ministry. And all he ever did was to go to Jerusalem. And after Jerusalem, maybe a little of the borders. That's all. If you call that, that's the ministry of our Savior. It was not worldwide. That was limited. Could you thank him or you limited? But when Peter took, up, took it up, when Paul came on the scene, they took the gospel to the whole of the world. Paul said, I've gone all over, even to Elikron, preaching the message of the gospel of Christ. He had gone to Europa. They talk about the ends of the earth, which at that time was Spain. They had gone there, taking the message to the east, to the north, all over the, the kingdom of the Romans, preaching the gospel. Who did that? The people he equipped. Men will take the walk further than you. A heart that can take it. Because you will not die like Jesus died. You will sing like this. And then they say, Daddy, 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 I just said I should tell you, please, a word, sir, a word, sir. He said, Kenny, I'm going to Canada now on a trip. I just want you to say a word. And you, you are here. You've, not left, you've never left the Lord. He said, You will walk back. Oh, you know, that's the reality. 
You now know what will happen? If you keep releasing them to that, a time will come they will say, you've had me. You need to listen to my father. Ah, my father is deep. Who is that? Deeper than you. I'm telling you, I don't want to call Deeper than me. Give us his name. And then you will begin to go, not because of your own goodness, but because of your son's goodness. The way the kingdom works is the mystery of the kingdom. I've seen it again and again. I've asked people say it. I've seen it again and again. Somebody opens door to the son. The son talks about the father and that's the way the door opens for the father. Are you following me? People who are under you now may grow further than you. Are you ready to take it, drama minister? Are you ready to take it, man of God? You know, we do like the whole world revolves around us. But the whole world revolves around the word of God. Let me say this. You God say I should tell people here. You and your wife alone cannot do all that God has called you to do. My pioneer. You and the wife. You, that's why she's looking very old. She has passed. She has not died. You, you, the work is so much. God has not called you and your wife alone to do ministry. You will need the help and the input of other men. Never underestimate the power and the influence of others in the work God has called you to. Nobody ever builds a ministry alone. Nobody. There are associates, volunteers, disciples, prayer warriors, people walking behind the scene. You may need to write this down. Jesus had 12 disciples. Paul had Silas, Timothy, Luke, Epaphras. Who do you have? I mean, you can begin to ask yourself now. You know, people think that God has called only pastors to be disciples, to disciple men. But that's very wrong. Music minister, somebody is just growing in song. Call her. Begin to mentor her. Begin to tell her. I know you have not gone to the nation, but the little you know, begin to teach her. Are you following me? Begin to pour out what you have. And then you begin to see results. Say, what do you have? Let me give you the end of that quote. Your first duty is not to design logo. Start a church. Or have a title. A reverend Kyle the lower layer. Your first duty is to raise armor bearers and disciples. That's your first duty. That's the Jesus pattern. Raising armor bearers. Raising disciples. Everywhere you go, raise disciples. Everywhere you go, raise men. Because men are still God's method. My father used to say, men are still God's method. Men are still God's method. Men are still God's method. Remember that at all times. Men are God's method. Finally, communion, that's the last C. Communion with God and love for him. That's the source of grace. Communion with God and love for him. I could have said prayer, but it's deeper than prayers. I could have said prayers, but it's deeper than prayers. It's communion. It's staying with God. It's being with God. How is your communion, man of God, woman of God? How is your study life? How is your prayer life? Do you spend more time with, on Facebook and on Instagram than with God? Do you, do you study exigencies? Do you study scriptures? Do you study history so that you can share on social media all you want to know for you? Do you pray so that you can be anointed or you pray because you love God? You can claim to love God, but you cannot love a God that you are not spending time with. If a man says he loves a woman, how do you know the time he spends with her? Phone call. That's why you don't have money in your account. You have called so take. Even MTN knows you by now. When they were doing the last thing, they send you a message. They come and do your NIN registration. And then they send you a message. Just show them at the door. Because you are a proud owner of MTN. You don't have to queue. And they know you. Why? Because of love. If you love God, you must spend time with him. Not only in prayers. All a generation ever knows is fantastic. But after that, do you pray in understanding so that your soul can be built up? Because when you pray in tongues, your spirit is built. But what about your mind? The seed. Where interpretation comes even to spiritual instructions. Your mind is the point of interpretation. When God speaks to your spirit, you need to interpret it. Can I explain that to you, somebody here? Can I explain it further to somebody here? 
Somebody say, you know, God told me Yoruba. He said, Maloseko. I said, ah, it's God a Yoruba man. Another person said, God told me. He said, uh, I should go. And the person spoke English. Another one says, God spoke to me. And the person said French. I said, ah, what happened here? What happened is that God speaks to their spirit. Uh, their mind interpreted it. And the language they speak is the language their mind will interpret it to. Therefore, some people speak and say, God said. And you know that the English they put together, one tabani, it's not correct English. And then you are wondering, is God's vocabulary that poor? <laughs> How can God say, he come? He's supposed to be, he came. What is God saying to you? But the problem is not what God said. The problem is their mind. You need mind development. After you have prayed in tongues, Pray also in understanding. Paul said, I will do this. He said, I will pray in songs, in spirit. I will also pray in understanding. He said, I will sing in the spirit. I will also sing in understanding. Why? Because your mind must be renewed. Your mind must grow. Brother man, they can't tell you to come and give us a closing prayer in a meeting. I say, Gano shika la kute, ukiti kulute, kulute, kulute. I say, thank you, Lord. Amen. Be going home. People look at you and say, what is wrong with you? You must be able to string those words together. Here is the pattern of Christ. Luke chapter 6 verse 12. Mark chapter 1 verse 35. Bible says Jesus prayed. He separated himself to pray. Bible says in Luke chapter 5 verse 16. I love that. Bible says he frequently withdraw himself to the wilderness to pray. Frequently. He was his pattern. Following his pattern. To be with his father. To be with God. Man of God, it is time to shut the door of your room. You are a too busy to make supernatural impact. Too busy. Every time, is it that you are doing counseling or deliverance? A time came, I said, this deliverance, I don't do it again. Demons know me. It's enough. I don't do it again. Let these people go and do. So now, I only do for great referrals. <laughs> you know, there are fathers when they call you. You can't say, I'm not doing. So, but apart from that, there are people who will do it. They can do it for 10 days. It's not my problem. They shall will do it. Why? Because we need to do other matters. Are you following me? You are interested in how they serve food in your church. You are interested in the how much they are selling Gary. Is that how it's welfare money being spent? Huh? You are interested in everything. You are, you are the one who pick clothes for ushers. You pick clothes for everybody. How can you have time to pray? You are busy. Can't you see? You are supposed to be bigger and fresher than this. See the way you look. It's not fasting. It's that you are so busy. You are busy. And the lie the devil tells a generation is to make them busy. Because we represent busyness as being impactful. A man can be busy going around in circles. For 40 years, Israel was busy because they were moving, but they were not moving forward. 40 years. Man of God, this is the seed for ministry work, the law for God. Jesus looked at Peter, do you love me? Give me an assignment. Do you love me? Tend my sheep. He didn't say, do you love me? Give me a hug. He said, tend my sheep. Do you love me? Feed my lamb. Why? Because when you have, when you have the love of God, God also finds usage for you. The proof of your love for God in ministry is shown by what you do. Feeding the sheep consistently. You might be tired, but you keep doing it. Why? It's a proof of your ministry. If you are going to do anything well, and if you are going to see results, it is time for us to return to that supernatural pattern of Jesus. Jesus' pattern is still the pattern in ministry. And I've discovered if we just follow that straight jacketed way, we would discover that many things we are trying to do are difficult because we want them difficult. You know, we are a strategy generation. If something is not complex, the Pareto principle, 80-20. 80, 80, 20 You are thinking 80-20, 20, 20-80. You are also using your mind, 80-20. It looks complex huh? so that you can preach it to people. But the ways of God are simple. God was not in the fire. God was not in the earthquake. But God was in the still small voice. He's still speaking today. And his pattern is still in the still small voice. Will you reduce your pride and become a little bit humble? Tell somebody you are doing great work for God. Even though he's passed on in two persons. But encourage them. Do something. Reach out to people. Be compassionate. A pastor is doing a conference. You know you want to do that conference, but you cannot send 5,000 error. He's being compassionate. You know he's struggling with his faith. Encourage him. Somebody gave birth to a child. Buy pampas for them. That's being compassionate. We are becoming more like Christ. Somebody is doing, is going through struggles. What's in a way? One of me He said, you are there. He was there for me. 
Have you not seen people say, I will never leave the church because the pastor was there for me? And you ask them, what did the pastor do? Nothing. He just came. You see, every day he was coming to our house when we lost our father. He was coming every day. That's being compassionate. That's what Jesus will do. Can I ask you every day you are faced with a challenge? Man of God, woman of God, ask yourself, what will Jesus do? It's an whole thing we have had it before. But it is not everything that must be new for you to make sense. That word is still new and it still makes a lot of sense. What will Jesus do in ministry? How will Jesus face this demon? How will Jesus face this sickness? How will Jesus start his own ministry? How will Jesus branch out from this ministry? What will Jesus do? Because the pattern of Jesus must continually be our pattern. Bow down your heart, bow down your mind. And begin to say, Lord, I've said certain things to you today. I don't know what you want to ask God for. But I just want you to ask God, I just want to ask you today, what pattern will you follow in ministry? What pattern will you follow in ministry? What pattern will you follow in ministry? Are you following the Jesus pattern? If you are following the Jesus pattern, I need you to say today, Lord, I follow your pattern. Jesus, I follow your pattern. Jesus, I follow your pattern. Your pattern for life, your pattern for ministry. I follow your pattern. I follow your pattern. I follow your pattern. You know that area that you are missing it. I've spoken about nine things. And I said many other things in the window. I want you to say, Lord, in what area am I missing it? In what space am I missing it? Begin to fix it in prayers. 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 I want us to just take a moment, be quiet in your soul, and let God breathe on you with this message. Can we just be quiet? I don't want you praying in tongues. Sir. Just focus on Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Just focus on Jesus. Just focus on Jesus. I say, Lord, look into me. Look into me. In what area do I need to do more? In what area do I need to do more? In what area have I missed out on that pattern? I'm sure the Holy Spirit is telling you now. Certain things is bringing to you. Say, why am I struggling? Why, why does it seem I'm not moving forward? God said, I should tell somebody that the problem is the motive. The problem is the motive. You want to blow. It's not for my glory. It's not for my glory. It's not that I should take the stage. It's not for my glory. I don't anoint what the motive is wrong. I only anoint that which is for my glory. I only anoint that which is for my glory. I only anoint that which is for my glory. Are you doing that? Thank you, Lord, for that word. Just, just let God look into you.